Hey, it's Foster, and I know it's been a while since we've given you guys a YouTube update, but that's because we've been busy revising our engine break-in procedure. So I figured this is the perfect chance to go over what that new process looks like since we just installed a built FA24 in our 22WX. But I am gonna keep this video broad enough that it'll apply to really any FA or EJ or any of the engine packages that we sell. So as you can tell, we've got our prototype FA24 installed in our 22WX and everything's all buttoned back up. Now there's a couple things I gotta run over before we get into the break-in procedure. If you are planning on running ethanol E85, we'd recommend you don't do that during the break-in process and that's because ethanol is gonna wash out some of the lubricity of the break-in oil. So we'd prefer you use pump gas, high octane, something like a 91 or 93 octane, depending on where you live. The next question we get asked a lot is what oil should I use during the break-in process? We'd recommend going with a Motul break-in oil like the one you see here. This is a 10W40. Uh, this is going to be high in mineral content and additives like ZDDP which is going to help protect your engine during the first couple startups. And you're going to stick with this for the first 750 miles so make sure you pick up a bunch of it. The next thing we got to talk about is your oil filter. We'd also recommend you pre-fill your oil filter. That's gonna reduce the amount of time it takes for your engine to get lubrication on the first couple startups. Obviously though, this FA has the oil filter sitting on top of the engine, so it's not really possible for this car, but if you've got an EJ, we'd highly recommend it. The last thing I wanna go over is adjusting your clutch pedal properly. We've seen a lot of engines get returned to us due to the fact that the clutch pedal is not properly adjusted. So if you have any questions about that, we've done a full video on it, and I'm gonna link it up above. So the next step we have to do before we start the car is we have to prime it first to circulate some oil and generate some oil pressure. Uh, so in the EJs and the older STIs and WRXs, you can disconnect the crank position sensor, but on the 22 WRX, it's in a kind of hard to reach place. So instead, what we're gonna do is flat foot prime the car. So to do that, you put your right foot all the way in on the gas pedal, and then you put your left foot all the way in on the clutch pedal, and then you can hit the start button. So I'm gonna prime the car for about 10 seconds and then I'm gonna let off the clutch and I'm gonna do that one more time. We're gonna verify we're getting oil pressure and then we'll go to the next step. So since our 22 WRX is basically a brand new car, we don't have an oil pressure gauge installed yet. So for the moment, we're using this temporary mechanical oil pressure gauge, uh, but monitoring your car's oil pressure is a critical step when you're installing a built engine. You wanna make sure that you're at the right oil pressure levels. So for today, we're gonna be using this temporary mechanical oil pressure gauge, as I said, but we did pick up an AEM digital oil pressure gauge and this is gonna be really nice. It reads up to 150 PSI. Plus you can set up some warning lights in case your oil pressure ever drops. Uh, and this is obviously much better than the dummy light on your car, which actually comes on at two PSI. So by the time your stock uh, dummy light turns on your dash, it's already too late. You're already gonna have issues with your engine. So make sure you don't rely on that. All right, so for this next start, I'm gonna let the car run for approximately 30 seconds. Uh, everything looks okay. We've got oil pressure, so we're ready to start the car up regularly. soon after. All right, we're officially on our third start and we're gonna let everything warm up. We're gonna let the car come to an idle. And as you can see, our oil pressure has dropped. Uh, it's hovering right around 79, 80 PSI. So that looks okay to me. Uh, there is quite a wide range you can expect for oil pressure. It's gonna depend on your engine and what oil you're using, what temperature it is. So there's a pretty broad range. Uh, but now we're ready to go to the next step. So this next step is gonna be for all of our built engines. Uh, it's gonna help seat the piston rings, but also if you have aftermarket camshafts, it's gonna help break those in properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly bring the throttle up to about 2000 RPM, and we're gonna hold it there for five minutes. And then once we've held it at 2000 RPM for five minutes, we're gonna do variance of throttle between two and four and a half thousand RPM. Okay, it's important to use a timer when doing this process, but I hit five minutes. So now I'm ready to work my way up to 2,500 RPM. And we're gonna continue to increase our RPM by 500 RPM every 30 seconds until we hit four and a half thousand RPM. 
Uh, and then we're gonna do this process up to four and a half thousand and then down to 2,000 for approximately 10 minutes. Okay, so everything started up. It sounds really great. There's no leaks, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but before we take the car on our first drive, we've actually got to change the oil after that first heat cycle. And the reason for doing that is that first start, you're going to get a lot of metal shavings in your oil. So it's really important that you change your oil filter as well. And we want to get that all out of the car before we continue to put miles on it. So I'm going to change the oil and then we're going to go for a drive. Okay, first drive in the WRX with a new built FA24 engine. I'm really looking forward to taking this thing out. It's been a really long time since I've driven the car. Uh, a couple things to run over before I start driving is I did let the car get up to operating temperature. I verified that the fans kicked on. Basically all the engine operations seem to be healthy. So now we can go ahead and put on our initial drive, which is going to be about 50 miles of break in driving. It's really important when you drive your car for those first 50 miles that you keep it under 4,000 RPM and you stay out of boost. So basically you gotta drive a little bit like a grandma, but it's an important part of engine braking procedure. And if you do it right, it's gonna really treat you right down the road. Your built engine's gonna last a lot longer. So even though it's a bit boring, you really have to brake in your engine properly and it's important that you do all these steps. So I've got my boost gauge pulled up on the dash of our 22 WX, and I've also got my access port with me today, and that's because I'm gonna be sending a data log to our tuner. Uh, it's got a break in tune on it at the moment, but I'm gonna data log about two, maybe three minutes of my drive today, send that off to our tuner, and if there's any changes that need to be made, the tuner can revise our map if needed. All right, something to pay attention to is when you're breaking your engine in for the first time, you wanna make sure you downshift like I'm heel towing here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a vacuum and it's gonna help your rings to seat better. Another thing to keep in mind is during those first 50 miles, you don't wanna just set it and forget it. So don't use cruise control. You actually wanna row through the gears a bit and that's gonna give the engine a variety of different loads and that'll help it break in a little bit better. So I'm on a back road here and it's kind of perfect because the Deborah X has short gearing. So I'm constantly shifting up, shifting down. And of course I'm keeping it under that 4,000 RPM. So in one of the next couple videos, we're gonna get the car on the dyno, we're gonna do a pro tune, and we're gonna really extract the full potential of this car. Uh, obviously until then, I've got a lot of driving to do. We gotta do several oil changes to break the engine in properly, but uh, we're pretty close to actually getting this thing on the dyno and making some jam. So I'm back from the first drive and we've already got 50 miles on the WRX and uh, the car ran pretty much perfect. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, now we're due for our second oil change, of course, because we're at that 50 mile mark. Then after that, we're gonna change again at 250 miles and 750 miles. And after that, we'll be done with our break-in procedure and you can switch to a synthetic-based oil and you can get your car pro-tuned if you plan on running 85 or any different fuels like that. Uh, we are gonna actually stick with the break-in oil though for the next couple oil changes. And as I said before, it's really important you use this it's got friction modifiers and additives that are crucial for that break-in process so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and get started changing the oil Sure, at this point in the process, you're asking yourself, when can I finally put my car on the dyno and get a pro tune? Well, after 750 miles, you can change your oil to a synthetic based oil and you can get your car tuned on the dyno. Now, if you have a dedicated race car, that means no registration, no license plates, there's a completely different dyno break in procedure. So, if that is you, make sure you reference our website and check out our break in manual. All right, well, that's pretty much it for the engine break-in procedure. I hope you found this video helpful, a lot easier than having to read through the manual, but we still suggest that you do reference all the information in there in case I missed anything. With that said, guys, if you like this content on our YouTube channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.